All right, it's Mr. Rops. And Mrs. Flynn. And we are here to talk about kinematics, which is lots of, uh, to do with physics and math coming together. Calculus and physics are hand in hand. They are good friends. All right, so a particle moves along the x-axis over the interval of one to six. Right. Where t is in seconds. Its position is given by this equation. Right. And we've taken the liberty to graph it here on our calculator. And so this is the position as it goes. So it goes to the right, slowly stops, goes a little bit left, and then it goes to the right again. But we should pause and talk about what derivatives and velocity and acceleration all mean. So if I have a position function, s of t, if I go and take the derivative of f at t, which means the rate of change of position. As the position changes over time, that is just another way of explaining or saying velocity. So the first derivative of position is velocity. Well, what if we do that again and we take the derivative of velocity? All right, or the little, second derivative? Right, so the derivative of velocity or the second derivative of position that's the rate of change of how you're speeding up or slowing down. That is... Acceleration. Hooray. Okay. So this kind of chart here, that's a good thing to hold on to. Okay. So if you, your first derivative of position is velocity, your second derivative of position is acceleration. Okay. So let us go back to our problem. So we have our function. It says, what is the position of the particle at rest? Well, what's it mean to be at rest? That means not moving. Right. Well, if I'm not moving, that means my velocity zero. is zero. So I need to find when my velocity equals zero. And we can do that because what we just learned from our previous chart was that velocity is the same thing as your first derivative. Okay. And so if we take our first derivative. 12t squared minus... 78 t t plus 120 120 okay so now we have to set that equal to zero and now we have to solve that well let us be smart about that and let's go to our calculator i'm going to turn this one off and hold on to it for later and we can graph the derivative of it is that are you going to put in the derivative i'm going to put equations? in the, i'm going to put in the derivative equation okay. 12 x squared minus 78 x plus 120. And we graph it. Um, we can find those zeros. Right, that's what we're going to look for, the zeros. So we go second, trace, we're going to find the zeros. Uh, my left bound will make it 1, and the right bound will make it 3. And we'll guess it at 2. Ah, Plus 2.5. So this is going to, I know t equals 2.5. Now what about the other value? Seconds. And the other one, we do the same kind of thing. Second trace, a zero. And we'll go from three as our left bound. Our right bound will make like, uh, I don't know, 5.5. 0.5. And we'll guess between those at four. Ah, good guess. <laughs> t equals four. So your position's at rest at 2.5 seconds and 4 seconds. Right. Particles moving to the right. Um, it is going to be when we have a positive slope. Right. So that means that the velocity is positive. Because the slope of the position is velocity. So we can look at that by looking at our sign chart. Right, so if we go velocity or, which is equal to the first derivative, and we have... We already S. found, yeah, we found our position points already, so... All right. So I know it's 2.5 and 4 is where it is at rest. So it's come along, it stopped, and then it went some more, and it stopped, and it went some more. So we got to find out what is going on with this thing. So we take a value over here to the left of 2.5. So 0. So 0. Gives us a... Plug it into here, and we positive get positive value. 120, so positive. I could also look at my graph. Here's my graph of the derivative. And if I recognize this, 
oh, if I look at it, I can see that it is, here's my 2.5, these values here are positive. If I move over here to between 2.5 and 4, I plug in like 3, I could go and I could calculate the value at 3, and I see that it is negative, which I can see on the graph down here. So this is negative. Oh, negative. And the last value, you can plug in maybe 5. You can put that on your graphing calculator again by tracing it. Or you could look over to your graph and see that we have positive values. All right. That's the y values are positive, not the slope. So this is positive. So that means the original function was increasing, decreasing, increasing. And in terms of moving along the x-axis, this is to the right. Then it went left. And then it went right again. So just to tell where the particle is moving right, we could say when our time is less than 2.5. Oh, not equal to less than 2.5. Or when the time is greater than. Or time is bigger than. 4. 4. Okay. Let's go to C part now. C part says find the position of the particle when acceleration equals 0. We well, look back to our little handy chart that you made for us earlier. Right. Acceleration. Here's acceleration. So that means the derivative of velocity or the second derivative of position. Well, I have velocity is 12t squared minus 78t plus 120. Help me remember that, okay? Okay, 12t okay. squared. <laughs> <T's> 12t <laughs> squared. I forgot the rest. Minus 78 Oh, you're T. cheating. You're cheating. <laughs> I'm looking at the calculator. calculator. <laughs> Plus 120. And this is my velocity. Okay, to find the acceleration, we can just take the derivative of that. All right, derivative of velocity will be acceleration. That's 24t minus 78. And the question says, find the position when acceleration equals 0. Oh, easy. So let's find acceleration equal to 0. Set the equation equal to zero. Solve for t. All right, 24t equals 78. So t equals uh, 78 divided by 24. <laughs> Let's see what that is. 78 divide 24, 3.25. So when your time is at 3.25 seconds. So that's when the acceleration is zero. And the question says, Find the position of the particle when acceleration is zero. So what is the position? Well, the position is s at t. So we have to find the value of s at 3.25. Well, there's what, our equation. There is our equation in here. Let's turn that one on. And let's go to the graph. We have two graphs now. And we'll trace. At Make sure you're on the right equation. Two, five. It is y1, that's the one I want. Okay. Hit enter, and I get 103.375. Is there a units to this, Ms. Flynn? Mm. No, no units. If I'm going to be to three significant figures, then I say 104.